Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again for yet another Super Mario Brothers video, and today, well, we're celebrating the release of the new Nintendo Super Mario Brothers Wonder Game in style by looking at a handful of prior released and newly released, we'll say, Jack specific Mario figures, specifically their more six inch scale figures, right? You got four of them. So we have Cat Mario this time around. <laughs> He got the cat box. I just recently rewatched the Super Mario Brothers movie on a plane. It's just such a nice movie to watch, right? But you got realistic eyes, premium details, 15 POA, and here's the barcode as well. These should all not be too hard to find at stores, so I'm just going to tell you right now. Peach in her Mario Kart attire, which is a nice change of pace for Princess Peach. Again, 16 POA, premium details. They always got to put that on the box, right? Across the board, companies. We know their premium details. We have the eyes, and you have Kamek, uh, Bowser's little hench guy, right? <laughs> Very cool. Seven POA on this guy. I got lots to say on him, so stay tuned. And then if you prior caught my video, see, I found Tanuki Mario before I found the other three. I did a video on him, so there's a whole video on that character already, but he's got 15 POA, premium deets. You get the idea by now. So, all across the board, four new figures to check out. But to go from the 6-inch figures to the 1.5-inch figures, which this was honestly the hardest wave to find for me for whatever reason. So, we have six new characters, each of them a character in a little question mark box. The first one, again, being Cat Mario. So he looks all adorable right there. Each one features a question mark box that unfurls, and you have a little bit of a, a backdrop. It's a little sticker. To be honest, I kind of like it more for the question mark box and the little micro figures, which are a lot of fun, to be honest. You'll see why in a few. Dry Bones. My God. That was the tough one for me to find in this wave, along with General Koopa. Finding one that didn't have a missing wing. I ran into that. As you notice, the wings kind of fell off in this box. Weird thing with the wings for General Koopa. And then you have the Goomba, which I absolutely love as well. He looks awesome. My fave of the wave, one of my favorite characters from Mario Land, Shy Guy. Love those little guys. Those are awesome. And then finally wrapping it up, you have the Tanuki Suit Mario. So nice spread of characters. Not too many Marios. And at least it's a nice deep dive into some other characters from the Mario universe. Now moving down to some play sets. You gotta have a place to put all these uh, 1.5 inch figures, right? So we have Bowser's Island Castle. And when I saw the promo images for this, I was like, you know what? That's rad. That's what I want to see. And mine is actually the one that was on display at this year's Sweet Sweet event in New York. So going to cut me some slack on this. I already opened the box and well, I'll get to all that in just a few. But it's a giant Bowser Island Fortress, just like in the movie. Nice box overall, nice artwork. And on the backside, it shows you exactly what you get in the box. It shows you exactly what it does. This one has a few more functions and features than, let's say, Super Mario Brothers Wave 1, and you get a little Bowser figure, and you can see all the characters we just talked about, along with the other play sets, which is uh, quite cool. I have to say, nice smattering of play set action for this Wave 2. But, of course, the one that I'm talking about to go from Bowser to now Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong gets a little bit more love for this Wave 2 endeavor for the Super Mario Brothers movie. And again, just as a heads up, mine came from the Sweet Sweet event, so I don't have the box, but he got all these fancy press photos and whatnot. So this is Donkey Kong Stadium, which again, uh, looks to be a nice backdrop straight from the film. So all in all, yeah, nice spread of figures to check out, that's for sure. So I want you to sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. I know you want to play Super Mario Brothers Wonder. We'll get to that in just a few, and I'll be joining you. This is a look at Wave 2 of the entirety of the Jack Specific Super Mario Brothers movie toy line. Let's -a go! So we'll go ahead and kick it off with the larger figures. And I'm going to tell you straight off the bat, I was a little disappointed with Wave 2 with these figures as opposed to Wave 1. With the Tanuki suit, you get the power leaf, right? That gives you the Tanuki suit power. That had some awkward paint here and there, but for the most part on the front, it's okay. The Tanuki Suit Mario, he's got a great head portrait to him, 
The colors, that's kind of what the Tanuki suit comes across as in the movie. I totally see it. He's more of that goldish yellow, right? Basic articulation. But articulation that I think overall Jack specific needs to work on. I think this is a great first endeavor. Some of the joints kind of grind into one another, especially around the midsection. With the Kamek figure, he comes with his magic wand, which is perfection, right? Gold with a little red ruby. It's a very flexible magic wand. But for a $20 figure, this is not it. <laughs> He's very light. He's got little to no articulation to him. He's very hollow. It's a great representation of Kamek. Don't get me wrong. From afar, he looks great. The articulation is very wonky. It's very lackluster. It's very much the bottom of this wave overall because this is the type of character which they have matched perfectly, right? Don't get me wrong. This looks like Kamek straight from Super Mario Brothers. everything. But need to pack the box with accessories, Maybe extra power-ups, maybe power effects, extra hands, head portrait, something like that to really juice up the box because, no, this is not a $20 figure. But he does hold his magic wand, well, fairly good. He's a little bit of a loose grip, unfortunately. But once you figure it out, you can get him set up on your shelf. Now, with Princess Peach, she comes with the blue shell, the flying blue shell, and that is a great accessory. Well done. And it's a really Big accessory, right? That's pretty cool. And I totally love the Mario Kart vibes, the movie vibes. It's sculpted well. It's painted beautifully. So this is a great accessory. However, I really wish it had a hole in the bottom and then a plastic clear stand to stand it, right? To kind of get it up in the air. That would have been kind of cool because it will not situate on its own. It's very round, so it's going to fall to and fro. Now, from afar, when I did see this Princess Peach, I thought, that's actually pretty cool. She displays well, she is nicely painted, she's nicely sculpted, but largely a very, let's say, boring figure. Unfortunately, she can't hold anything. That's where extra hands would have come in nicely, something like that, or just hands to hold something. Like in the movie, where she kicks that Koopa weapon and she picks it up and she's going to face off with Bowser. That would have been a nice touch to throw that in there. She gets enough head articulation. I love the helmet. I love the clear booster gold goggles. The articulation itself is kind of marred by the sculpt of the figure. So it's kind of like, okay, great sculpt, great paint. The articulation kind of lackluster. And I'm not one for a stickler for articulation, especially since it looks like Perhaps they have a bike coming or she was designed to sit on a bike at some point because she has that thigh articulation. But like I said, she's very humdrum overall. You can actually swap the head portraits between the regular Princess Peach movie figure and this one. So I kind of dig that. But see, that's where uh, for a $20 figure, an extra head portrait in the box really would have amplified everything. And uh, if you were wondering, the helmeted head uh, it, it will kind of stay on the Princess Peach regular body, but it won't pop on there uh, and stay. So overall, again, nice in idea, nice in looks, but kind of meh at the end of the day. And that leaves us with Cat Mario. And Cat Mario comes with a cool accessory as well. You get the question mark box, but how come he didn't come with the Cat Bell accessory, right? You're punching the block. Something's coming out to give him the cat suit. Again, 20 bucks. You got to put something like that in the box, right? You got to do a little bit more, especially since for the most part, he reuses parts and pieces from the Tanuki suit. It's just a different paint job, different tail. He's got the big old cat hands. And again, much like the Tanuki suit, he's done nicely. Nice colors overall, although the head, it's not really picking it up on camera, but it's a very muted yellow as opposed to the body, which is a lot more darker vibrant yellow just as a heads up so it doesn't match all too well but that's kind of nitpicking it from afar you won't really say much again the paint the sculpt everything is there again much like tanuki suits some of the leg articulation will grind into the crotch piece it will kind of stress that area and i don't want to see that with a new figure i just bought so little things here and there that i would like to see changed for potentially a wave three or just going down the line for any other twenty dollar price point wave of Mario action figures from Jax. But I have to say, in terms of setting them all up, getting them on display, 
Well, they do make for a nice collection, so there is that. So it's all about your taste. Do you want extra articulation? Do you not care? You like it for displayability? You're not gonna get the full, we'll say, uh, scalature, right? Everything's kind of all over the place. They're doing their own thing. It's just figures, right? There's no scale in mind. But again, from wave one to wave two, they have nailed the looks. They have great paint. They have a lot going for them, especially Bowser, which when we do the top tens and whatever at the end of the year, he'll definitely be on that list as no surprise because that is amazing. But through and through, Jax has done a lot of great things here, but I would like to see for, again, the coming waves, if that is actually a thing, a little bit more attention to detail and a lot of bit more inside the box because I think that would really elevate everything. Now, to move on from the larger set of figures to the more miniature set of figures. And again, I'm going to tell you honestly, I had a lot more fun this go around with the minifigures. And I think the minifigures coupled with Wave 1's minifigures and then of course these new larger playsets, right, so to speak, work well when you have all these characters. We'll talk about more in terms if you're a kid having fun with it, but as a collector, as a Mario fanatic, they do really display well. So you have all these spread out. It's kind of like a chessboard, checkerboard, right? Things like that. The cat Mario, as small as he is, they've really executed the paint fairly well. He's even got the little pink paws. He's got the white all over little accents here and there. The only articulation he has is at the head, but I like that he's crouched in that pounce position. Tanuki Mario is equally as good. Again, the minute details that are there are all presented well, painted well. It's a nice little mini Tanuki suit with some arm articulation on both sides, and then you can rotate his head. So simplistic through and through, right? But he does look good, as does Dry Bones. And again, I'll tell you, this was the hardest figure for me to find. Months, I would say, at least two months of trying to look for this guy. Let me know down in the comments below if you had any trouble finding these. Because every time I'd go, I had just missed him for whatever reason. Shy Guy, again, much like Dry Bones, executed well. Nice to have Bowser minions, right? Especially the Shy Guy, one of my favorite Mario-type characters, right? Love the mask. He's got little nub articulation and little waist articulation. That's it, right? That'd be cool if you could pop the mask off, see what those things finally look like underneath. Then you have General Koopa, or you have General Blue Shell, or the Blue Shell, right? Now, this guy, like I said, every single one of these I saw in the store had a problem with the wings, including the first one that I bought, because I didn't even realize it, it just full on was missing the wing. Nobody tampered with the packaging, nothing like that. So if you do get them, make sure you got both wings. The wings, Obviously, when they were assembled in the factory, weren't put on correctly. They do stay in fine once you have the figure out and you can manually press the wings in yourself. He's got great paint. He stands well. He's kind of got like a baby arm on one side. And he's got the long arm as if he was holding something on one side, but he's not holding anything. It's just kind of his stance. And then lastly, you have the Goomba. And the Goomba looks great. He's got a little waist articulation, but he's designed well. He very much looks like the old school original Goomba, and I appreciate it for that. And like I said, with all the different question mark blocks, I'm not a huge fan of the little blocks. They open up, they have a little image from the movie, whatnot. Those are fine. It is what it is. But it's really the blocks themselves with all the little mini 1.5 inch characters. That makes for a nice setup. Even if you didn't get the play sets, you can really have a lot of fun with these 1.5 inch figures but speaking of playsets, well, we got two of these guys that are going on. So first and foremost, we have the Donkey Kong Coliseum Arena playset. And it's pretty darn cool from a display point of view, right? So you have the question mark blocks. They have little peg holes inside. I'll show you what that all does in just a few. This is a nice touch. So these are more of these girders, right? And very reminiscent of the original Donkey Kong game, if you look underneath, especially being red, right? So these, from the specific angle where you're supposed to port them in, will support these little accessories, which is a tire swing and then a crate swinging, right? So again, straight from the movie, straight from the battle arena, the Coliseum, when Cranky Kong puts Donkey Kong and Mario against one another. That was a great scene, right? And What's a Donkey Kong Coliseum Arena without a bunch of barrels? You get three of these. They're all painted nicely. They're all just 
perfect. Little tiny barrels, including a, a giant Donkey Kong to throw said barrels. Or at least I wish he could throw them. He's very pre-posed. It's very much the 1.5 inch scale figures. It's nicely painted overall. Minimal articulation, arms and head. He's got his little tie. But no, unfortunately, he cannot hold the barrels, which I would have preferred. The playset itself is interesting. When I first looked at this, I was kind of, okay, this is okay, I guess it's fine, right? You got the water coming down, you got the big golden monkey idol face on the front. That's totally cool. And on the back side, you got a little bit uh, rocky sort of texture, and you got greens, and you got these little windows, right? That's totally cool as well. If you see right here in this middle one, I'll show you what that does. It turns into a slide, basically. But again, all of these fold open, they fold closed, but once you get it open, it's actually kind of cool inside, I will say. You got all these different graphics of all the monkeys and all the Donkey Kongs and everything else inside the Coliseum watching the battle, and everything folds down. It's kind of like Mighty Max, but for Donkey Kong, right? Really nice paint through and through. Executed really nicely in terms of the miniature, right? I don't know where you begin creating all of this, but as you can see, you have portholes and peg holes all over. That's where the question marks and the red girders will peg into. Now, as you can clearly see, there's more portholes than you do have accessories, so you can kind of customize it and do it and display it how you'd like. So there's a choose your own adventure, and you would simply just take the red girder just like this and port it in, and you'll be good to go regardless. Now, you take the question mark box and you peg those in, and there's several places all over that you can peg those in at your leisure. So we'll give it a go, and you can have Princess Peach and Toad. Unfortunately, there's no Cranky Kong, but you can have Mario, or you can have Donkey Kong and Cat Mario going up against each other with some barrels, some question marks. It's very cool in a displayable sense. Now, from a kid's point of view, I would say that much like Wave 1's, I love that, but ultimately the playability, I would not say it's there. This might be a 10 second wonder to be quite honest with you. Again, for me, you kind of set it up, maybe you change it from month to month, whatever, and it's a little thing on your desk, but it's really all it is there for me. On the backside, like I said, it's a little bit of a slide. You can put Mario in there and he slides out on this end. But then that's really it. Changing out parts and pieces. If you have the other 1.5 inch characters, swapping those out, adding them, subtracting them, putting in characters that were not in the movie in this scene. Sure, you can totally go that route as well. And little tire swings and things are swinging around. It's interesting. With the articulation that Donkey Kong has, kind of, sort of, you can do that, right? But not really. So again, like I said, displays well, but the playability for this, for kids, I would say not so much. And now with the final level of our video today, we have Bowser's Island Castle. And this is very menacing. It's a very big playset, and I appreciate it through and through. Of course, it's his floating island fortress from the beginning of the movie and all throughout. You do get a mini Bowser figure, which I feel was a glaring omission from Wave 1, but I'm glad to have him now. Gorgeous paint all over, especially for a minifigure. Minimal articulation. You got the arms and the head, of course, but all the spikes, all the little subtle hints of green along the yellow skin, all the little rivets on all his Hot Topic bracelets. It's all there. They did a great job on this mini Bowser, along with the floating island, right? That is so cool. And as a Mario fan, as a Nintendo fanatic all these years, it's so great to see these types of of Mario toys, but I will tell you, there is some assembly required, so you will have to do that, but I love all the little swinging things, right? You got these big, the the anchors, essentially, like in the ice level when they go up against the penguins, right? That was funny. You have this big head that you'll have to pop on yourself. The jaw is articulated. That's pretty cool. It opens up to a little slide area. I'll show you all that in just a few. You have little doors. This one on this side being kind of like a Boo Mansion style where it kind of leads to nothing, right? Which is totally fine. But on this side, it opens up, and I'll show you exactly what that does in just a few. But 
little hidden compartments here and there. That's fun. And that's fun for the kiddos. But again, like on this side, you got the big swinging anchors to and fro, right? That's pretty cool to see. I totally dig that. Up top, Lots of lava, lots of sculpted details, and something I want to point out right here. See these two little holes right here? Because I got this from the Sweet Sweet event, I don't have these parts and pieces. It's supposed to have the two little turrets like you see right there. They pop into there. So just make sure when you buy it in store, it has them. I will get them eventually. I'll just probably have to buy another set, but you get the idea. Those are why those are missing. But I love the head right there. It's leaking the lava all throughout. It goes into the big old lava pits down below, and it just has great sculpts all over it. It's very cool. All the little architecture that Bowser has, but I love that it rolls Underneath, it has four wheels. It's very craggy, very rocky all over the place. It's definitely a, a very cool toy. And I think one that will fare better in terms of the playability for the kiddos, right? So this pops open and then you have this little trap door right here, a little lava trap door. There's no push button or nothing. You just push the character down. These stairs will unfurl. And I swear, when I was doing this initially, and it does come with instructions, all you have to do is push this button and it elongates the stairs. <laughs> I'm sitting there trying to like form fit it in there. I'm like, why is this so awkward? Yes, push the button. And then you see these little peg holes right there and it just simply slides in. So the stairs are steady and you have a, a bit of a throne area, let's just say, for Bowser up top to kind of oversee his kingdom, right? So that's totally cool. You got to put him up there. Now, in terms of the movie, I would say, yeah, you could use Mario, but I believe that uh, a shy guy and a Luigi would probably work better in terms of the movie, right? So you push down on the trap door. It, it's not a push button, like I said, nothing like that. Luigi falls to his doom. Where does he go? Well, that's where this little door opens up again and he slides out. So again, I think kids will get a kick out of that. A little mysterious area. And then right here, you can open up the mouth and Luigi can slide right out as well. Any character. This is a nice touch. You have the jail area from the movie, right? You have these big old well-designed cages, which I absolutely love. They hang, they have the door that opens up. You can put Luigi in there. I love that. And for lack of a better character, let's put a Goomba in there, right? See, that would have been a nice touch for this set to come with a Luma, right? To put him in there. That's a big part of the movie and some of the memes from the movie, right? <laughs> More meat for the grinder, but they swivel, they rock. It's very cool and you can hide them away. Uh, later, right? So Bowser can rule properly with all his minions placed all over the place, especially if you have Kamek as his side. There's no piano, unfortunately. But overall, this is the place that I had the most fun with. And in terms of displayability and form and functionality from what you see in the movie, yeah, there's a lot of fun to be had. I think kids will have a lot more fun with this one. Sure, the Donkey Kong one may vary from kid to kid, but for an adult collector like myself, I totally appreciate them all, but I had the most fun with this one. I just think it's it lends itself a lot more to some fun factor that was a little bit missing with the Donkey Kong level. And through and through, it's just a giant big playset, and I'm having an absolute blast with it. And then just to show you a little bit of scalature between the two, these will roughly fold out or just display, like in terms of the Bowser's Floating Island Castle. But you get the idea. They do take up a lot of space, but it's nice that the Donkey Kong level will fold in on itself, whereas the Bowser one, you can, of course, put the mouth up. You can put the cages down and fold that up in that sense. But it does take up a large surface area as a heads up. So that'll wrap it up for my look at Wave 2 of the Jack Specific Super Mario Brothers movie toy line. And if I'm being honest... I would say Wave 1 was definitely more of a hit for me with the larger 5, 6-inch figures. But then Wave 2, the 1.5-inch figures. So it's a nice grab bag, nice mix-up. But through and through, I think they're fun offerings in terms of toys for not only kids, but for adult collectors or just Mario fans in general. But I would say in terms of the larger figures, I'd like to see more. But I think a few changes here and there would definitely benefit them going forward in the future. Along with a couple nitpicks here and there with the 1.5 inch playsets. But ultimately, I would like to see more playsets, please. But you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Mario. 
And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, okay, you're done. Go get those Super Mario Brothers Wonder Games and gets to playing. I'll see you there. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.